Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question, and that is that sort of narcissist and trauma connection, a relation with another that's had a deep, searing impact on you another individual which seems to have had a lasting effect sometimes not always for the best or what you feel is congruent with happiness fulfillment peace harmony serenity it has a different feel it has a you know a different emotion something doesn't quite sit right with you and you can't quite articulate it um, and, you know, there's sometimes a feeling of fear, a tinge of neg neg negativity, concern. They might, you know, th there's a, a feeling of, uh, lo you know, looming uncertainty or doom or just really not knowing where to step. A feeling of ongoing uncertainty, fear, trepidation, insecurity, not knowing. And this can keep people blocked or stuck, particularly when it's in the trauma zone. So when we talk about the narcissist or psychopath and trauma, it's important to understand and focus on you. The narcissist, psychopath, and trauma, that's a whole other video. That's a different discussion. We're here to talk about what it feels like inside your own body. Inside your own body is the most important real estate, is your internal real estate. You might have a house on the hill. You might have a mansion you know, in the Galapagos, you might have uh, a little shed uh, on a riverbank. And no matter what the domicile, how you feel within yourself is the most important. That is your internal real estate. There are all sorts of stories out there, people, you know, who have all reasons ostensibly on paper to be happy, but they are not. And they can really rock the boat for a lot of people, meaning the people who are your troublemakers, the people who just seem to wound others. They just seem to be destructive. They have an evil look. There's a certain negativity. There's a glare, a glance, a je ne sais quoi, something you can't quite feel or you can't quite put your finger on, yet it is disruptive. When we talk about trauma and the narcissist, we're talking about trauma to the receiving party, the other person who's on the other side of the fan, the other side of the ice cream scooper, the other side of the birthday cake, you know, the one who is encountering a relationship with someone where you feel that you are put through an unfair, unjust, unequal, imbalanced amount of sort of what, what, what becomes a feeling of negativity, hurt, or really what is a wound. You might skateboard, you might be skateboarding as a kid and fall on your knee. You're going to skin your knee. That's a wound. If you're a kid, chances are your pain tolerance, you know, is, you know, either depending on how much attention you want to get from your parents, those around you, or the other kids, how cool you want to look, you might just, you know, pick yourself right back up and keep playing because it's more important to have fun or the pain sort of, or the fun sort of masquer masquerades the pain. It's sort of, it's, you, you do a sort of quick uh, calculation. It's okay, I'll endure this pain because the benefit um, the, is, is more worth the pain that I'm, I'm getting. So you go through these emotional calculations when there's trauma present, physical, emotion, spiritual, psychological, intellectual trauma. Trauma is very important to understand the experience, particularly as it pertains to you and your physical body. Your physical body is, is like a, a temperature, a thermometer. It's like a, a compass. If you've ever seen those compass, you know, It'll say you're heading north now, now you're heading west, now east. So your, your internal compass really is that which sends your life into a specific direction 
taking a specific type of behavior all the time, taking a specific type of approach all the time, what you call yourself, I am this, I'm a, I'm a rebellious da da da, and I'm, you know, so you, you might sort of identify then with a trauma as part of your own identity, meaning you don't understand yourself without the trauma. In other words, it's been so, uh, gestalt, meaning it's encompassed the whole of you. So you need to understand if you have been in a relationship with someone where the odds have been particularly difficult, you feel like you're showing up at a uh, casino boat every time you get together with them. You don't know what's going to happen. Are you going to win? Are you going to get lucky? Are they going to pout? Are you going to lose it all? Is something finally going to pay off? You've been playing it long enough. I mean, you go through all these internal calculations, which are usually done within the self, really in the source of a vacuum, which means without outside testing. So oftentimes they can run amok or be sort of erroneously attended to or not attended to. So when it comes to trauma, let's just understand a couple rules when it comes to healing. Number one, knowing that there's no one more important than you. Oh boy, that might not sit well with you, especially if you've had a relationship with a trauma, uh, with a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath, because they will make sure that their identity, their needs, their voice, their values, their interpretation, what they think, their opinion, their judgment, will have more weight than anything really other people have to say, do, feel, speak up for, want to negotiate, want to discuss. It You oftentimes will not get airtime um, with that. And as a result, you'll begin to swallow the emotional negativity pill of, I'm really not that important. I'm not that smart. I'm not that as good looking as... And so you will go through this internal weight, I mean, uh, you know, of yourself and really what comes to seeing things clearly and negotiating your own inner compass, your own inner balance, your own internal value, your own internal freedom. Okay, can you, you know, talk to someone who's been locked up in a, in a prison for some time and they are free now and they were put away you know, erroneously, the law didn't serve them, they'll tell you freedom has no cost. It is priceless. You know, your freedom, you, you have to look at the opportunity costs, the other things that it could be taking and robbing you um, of, but you don't know it because of this experience of trauma, which has to tend to be very possessive, meaning it wants to claim everything about you and want to claim your identity. It wants to claim where you go, how you decide, how you feel, how far you go, um, what you experience, what you take in and consume through your senses, what you gaze upon, what you listen upon, what you taste upon, how you plan, how you you know negotiate within yourself. These are all sort of inner uh, sort of, uh, you know, movements, if you will, that can follow really certain ebb and flow, which means it can be really present. The tide can be high, like in a full moon. How is, you know, so if you have a lot of mass, it'll pull things in that direction. It's like a gravity, you know, that's why gravity, because the earth is the largest element. I mean, and so our gravity, it's a, it's a law that, you know, is irrefutable, basically. So when it comes to the narcissist and wounding, realize that is the trouble is they have sort of this very <clears throat> hurtful way, yet a simultaneously rewarding way of interacting with others, which tends to sort of keep from view the opportunity cost or sort of your positive leverage, your strength your ability, your common sense, your story um, is, you know, goes sort of muffled because their trauma speaks larger. larger. The narcissist, the psychopath, 
they feel honestly that there's nothing more important than them and their support, meaning you will be assigned a role, which is not true your true self. It's what they want or what they need, what they see their vision for you. So a, a vision, what the narcissist carries sort of is their vision for themselves. And this oftentimes results in trauma and traumatic experience for others because they have this sort of fantasy um, of how things should be and how things should play out because of just who they are. This will become sort of this, they can be sometimes very egotistical. Uh, but the, the problem is the woundedness that they cause others. So realize that the trauma um and the root word of trauma is from the greek uh which means to wound so you know we don't usually think of the tr the greek as a weak people <laughs> you know uh all these ancient uh you know the ancient romans uh ancient greeks you know they you know this was uh you know our ancient cities and a lot of where our our verbs come from these very these various backgrounds but you need to understand how trauma spins off and how it manifests and displays itself so you can understand um what this feels like in the body as it relates to suffering your illness um your well-being how it feels to be you um, all these sort of je ne sais quoi sort of things, which you need in the privacy of these videos, you can better understand because they will cause a discomfort to others, an awkwardness, a clunkiness, a sort of you're not on top of yourself, not in alignment. It's not he head, shoulders, heart, hips. You know, you're, you have to sort of get off base. Eventually, the relationship will cause you to get off base, out of balance, as it pertains to yourself. This is traumatizing. It is not a choice. This is when, you know, coping starts. So you must realize that trauma is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience, which means it is going to trump, triumph, and play louder. Like if you were to play a record, it's going to play this song even sort of above the other songs that you might play on that same record. In other words, it's gonna, it's gonna wanna be the A hit. It's gonna wanna be the Rolling Stones satisfaction. It wants to be Miley Cyrus, uh, Climb the Hill or whatever that song is. You know, it, it wants to be the number one. And it wants to live number one within you. This is sort of a strange thing. And sort of, it can take you over like a weed, a moss, um, like a, like a, a, a vine. If you ever see a vine, like sort of, you know, growing itself around a tree. So they kind of have this parasitic effect where they need others. And to the point where they get sort of their control, they, they have, a uh, people just like, remember those, uh, remember those, uh, those games and you would turn the handle and the person would kick and then the ball. So they like to keep everybody, you know, on their own little twisty uh, charm thing, their own little joystick. They want to keep everybody, you know, you're here showing up looking like this. You're not here um, and you're not needing me, even though you want to celebrate a holiday or you want to be involved. And that, you know, becomes trumped. You know, they will have some sort of reason, and this becomes a deeply distressing and disturbing experience. So it's something that really is there etched in deeply. So it's just like the tracks of a, uh, if you will understand the way it, it, it works out in your automatic processes. So it takes you on that, it's too deep and painful to the point of the subconscious, meaning it is, it, you don't even, you aren't even aware of its effects. And then the groove, the rut, or the narrow, the narrow channel um, that it keeps you in. The, the restriction, the, the limitation, uh, particularly that of a negative self-facing belief, which means 
part of you was just, hey, you know, oh, I feel like crap. I mean, you, you're, you're not going to come out every day. You know, I don't believe in myself. You're, you're not going to hear it that easily, you know, uh, but you can definitely tell it by your feelings. Um, and when you look around and you see, you know, what you have, what you've done, um, you can kind of look and say, if I were to look at this as a good friend and look at my setting, you know, can I say that a wounded person, um, you know, this is the example of a wounded person. You know, this is someone who is shell-shocked. Uh, this is someone who is traumatized. This is someone who has post-traumatic stress syndrome. And don't, you know, neglect that. Don't try to um, disown that. Don't, you know, because if you don't process what is trauma and what it feels like, then you won't know what, what it is. And it will keep you limited. It'll keep you stuck. And furthermore, it'll keep you living a life and an I am, which is not, um, par you know, is not equivalent to sort of your, your best self, your, your best inner environment, your, your best opportunity, your best potential, or really sort of the fuel that you need, which, you know, manifests as motivation, which manifests as decisiveness, uh, which manifests as doing something new today which manifests as seeing opportunity, no matter what has gone past. And you go, oh my God, even this hour is opportunity. This two hours, this 15 minutes is opportunity for me to take massive action and get into a better situation where I am looking at the, the long-term effects. And then by recognition, you can allow it to diminish and be reduced you know just sort of because that rut just like if you were to see in a snow tracks and it wasn't plowed and all these uh, 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 cars and trucks are going there and they're all just staying on the track because it's you they've they've already you know so many cars have gone on it that you, you've got good traction now and if you try to change lanes and if there isn't that groove there then your car might swerve and this you might have to work to get it back on track you might have to really work on creating that new pathway that is what neuro, you know neurological pathways are like so they're, they're going to keep you in that rut because that's automatic. That's uh, what in, in, uh, in the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, that, you know, that's your automatic process. That's your subliminal, uh, what does he call it? Um, Napoleon Hill, when it's just sort of, it's, you're, you've already rehearsed and memorized this to the point where it's, it's automatic and it's like self-suggestion. There's sort of a word that he uses there, but to the degree that it's lived, you know, and been that way to the negative, it can be that way to the positive where you can rebuild and restructure those new neural pathways and sort of, instead of going the, the, the rut of trauma and that deep rut, you know, taking a moment and going and, and, you know, getting that car. Yeah. And you might not feel a lot of, um, intellectual traction, emotional traction, in doing something new, in going out there and making a brand new decision and going out there and saying, you know, I think I would like to, I would think I would like to become, I have, you know, a feeling, I, I have a, an inspiration and it might come that quick, but if you're so used to living in the trauma zone, you will just sweep away your dispel, any of those good sort of awards, acknowledgements, validation of of the good even though you were swerving and you got into that winter lane that new lane out of the rut of trauma you got out of i am not a traumatized victim we're just going to use that analogy for the, and you might not know is this car are these tires even going to be able to handle this do i have the traction can i communicate can i show up can i get myself there um, or am I too scared? Am I copping out? Am I going back to the trauma? Am I still showing up in my life as that traumatized person? If you look around in your life, the things that you have, uh, the shape of your uh, bathroom, your kitchen, your living area, is it, you know, does it look, you know, do you, 
if you were to be beside yourself and sort of champion your life and which is the role of metacognition, the human ability uh, to think about what you're thinking about. So this is really where the healing is going to start to take place because it's very difficult to simultaneously be and live in that trauma zone and then sort of not say I'm a victim, I'm traumatized, I'm weak, I'm miserable, I, all these other, you know, value propositions that the narcissist, you know, told you, uh, you know, whatever those little blurbs that went right down into the subconscious, right down into your emotional gut. I mean, you were churning those in like, uh, you know, you were, you're digesting those and making that part of your being. I mean, that could have be, you know, that could show you how vulnerable and open you made yourself to this person, how, how much you let your guard down, how much you let your boundaries down, and then to the fact that maybe you didn't have any boundaries or standards at that time. That was then, this is now, okay? So just because of what, you know, those deep grooves, it doesn't mean that you have to continually be you know, on those nerve endings that are uh, sprouted and sourced from the trauma itself, the recurring trauma, the things you saw, heard, felt, the blow-offs, the emotional shock. You must understand and own um, the depth. Um, and this is for yourself to know only, for the divine to know only. You're not going to go walking up to them. Yeah, you know, you had such this deep effect on me and I'm traumatized now and I can't live without you. And I, you're, you're not going to present yourself that way to yourself or to the world because then you're still living almost in the same negative messages as if you still woke up uh, next to them this very day. Are you still carrying on these conversations with the wounded you know, wounded people wound, healing people, healed people heal. So don't be afraid of who you are or what happened. Um, you are human. This is, you are a human being. Hopefully that is a relief to you. Um, this is an automatic process, which means there's nothing that you could have done to have power or change it. So instead of saying, I was weak, I was a dumb dumb, I was a dodo, uh, idiot, whatever negative uh, bad thing that you feel about yourself or say, it, it might come out as blurbs, I hate myself, I'm such an idiot. Stop that self-talk. That You know, would you really um, want to amplify that? You know, put it on a record and, and say a record, I hate myself, I'm such a dodo. Would you wake up and play that? I mean, if you're into that, you know, into that zone and you're in that negative zone, well, you know, that's a, a costly and, and down and out way to be. And maybe you want to vote for a different life or a lifestyle for yourself. It is okay just because of A doesn't mean B. So a lot of people have these emotional calculations going on in their minds. You know, I will never be, I will never become. It's because if you've had your your ladder up the wrong tree, up the wrong wall, up the wrong person, you're, you're getting fruits from maybe an orchard that you don't want to pick. Poisonous, toxic, makes you feel a specific way. It's just like food. You can eat specific foods um, and it might not make you feel as good. And then you find the foods that do make you feel better and you try to eat those and then you don't get tempted by the the soup uh the surface emotion of this is you know the surface emotion of i'm back together so that you know whatever that habit you would have you know maybe um employed within yourself uh we're back together everything is safe oh oh good you know and then you might have lived just for their pacification and you ended up then pacifying yourself so in other words because of this trauma you might have a lot of these trauma pacifiers just like a baby you put a pacifier in so they stop crying you know and then along you know they're on their way happy <clears throat> realize that this you know same experience 
can breed, you know, this same physical emotional shock. It can breed the development and necessitate a lot of these pacifiers to be employed or deployed in your life. Substance abuse, alcoholism, overeating, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, um, drug abuse, you know, oftentimes it serves a number of purposes, um, you know, to, because of this, this feeling, the trauma is so rigid. It is so deep. It's the deep grooves. It's the one that wants to be the star hit, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of reasons why it'll get a grip on you. Um, but, but only you, and this is kind of a feeling that I had the other day, only you create the tides in your life. Um, just like a, a runner, they, uh, you know, and I used to run a lot. Um, a runner will create their own tides. They'll, they'll create their own spurts. They'll tell themselves, yep, I'm going to take the next 300 yards and I'm going to jog this or I'm going to sprint this and then I'm going to take the next and I'm going to walk it and then I'm going to jog again. And you'll see them looking at their clock. They'll say, you know, I'm going to run for half an hour. It's going to burn these many calories or I'm, I have to burn, run an hour and they'll time themselves. They'll, they'll, and they'll, they'll get themselves, you know, on, on, on track. They'll, they'll know exactly what they need to do. When I was in college, you know, wake up an hour early, go to the gym, do the running, run there. You know, this was before my classes that would start at eight. So I put a high priority because I knew if I could do that in the beginning of the day, it would be done. So it's a, it's a similar, it's a similar thing. You can be um, in that positive track. And, and really nurture that and make sure. So, you know, and then all the behaviors that come with that negative rut. Um, it's important, it's important um, for you to know. It's important um, for you to know that, you know, uh, why. And, you know, the, the, there's a rigidity that the, a strength that the trauma is going to want to hold on to because of um because it was so emotionally charged so when something really gets etched in there's an emotional charge usually it becomes of self-preservation i.e life or death i.e shelter no shelter food no food love no love you know um uh, and, you know, and then all these, you know, different things, Abraham Maslow, you know, the hierarchy of needs, uh, you know, it means no water. It means no air. It means no conversation. And it certainly doesn't mean, um, personal growth. So realize that, especially when it comes to that hierarchy of needs, that your body will, it's, will have automatically have, have gone into coping mode. Um, and so, you know, that coping mode, though, oftentimes doesn't make for a good life, which means, are you still constantly coping? Are you still coping with the effect, the rigidity, the long-term uh, song of this? I mean, there's some great oldies that you might want to play and dance to that have been there for decades. You might have music that you know, and you still like the, you know, and how it sounds. It's a classic, you know. But, but the trauma, the wound, which is in the central nervous system, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic nervous system, if you can, you know, want to study that, the nervous system then gets affected. The nervous system, what you pay attention to, what highlight, you know, so in other words, it'll direct your attention according to necessity, meaning it will, it'll, it'll, it'll drive the train. It'll have an engineer. It's a trauma can have a great conductor and a big old train engine. It's going to want to drive your whole life. It's going to want to be the locomotive that takes you to, you know, the end of the train, you know, which you might just be a, a dead end. Where's this trauma going to take you? If you're going, oh man, it's not taking me anywhere. And, and so you're still on the side banks. You know, to what degree can you go, 
It's been nice sitting here on the side banks, twiddling my thumb, dealing with fear, just coping. So, you know, people, and this will be in the gradient, you know, to the degree of coping versus just, I'm not caught up in the coping. So only you can get to know what does the pool of coping than the coping mechanisms that you looked at or utilized or employed or automatically were deployed within you to protect you, to keep you safe, to keep you emotional equilibrium. Even if that meant not freaking out for the day, not freaking out for the night, having shelter for the night, having food for the day, having love, having, you know, and, and, and some people, sometimes, you know, trauma will masquerade even the memories. So trauma can be a very difficult uh, bedfellow <clears throat> to, to say, um, yeah, yeah, you've already hogged up enough of the bed or my life or my thoughts or my feeling right now. And it's up to me, instead of clinging to the edge, how come my life is so limited and I'm sleeping on six inches here and I'm constantly, you know, clingy and you're afraid to get, you know, you can't relate to others because you're still this clingy and you're not able to relate then in a healthy, more open way. So that means you have to take more time in, um, and looking at this rigidity and getting it loosened up, you know, getting it broken up into some pieces, breaking it up, even if it's hard as granite, hard as, you know, you're, you, you've, the trauma keeps you honed in. It's just like the source, you know, just like the sun bring us, brings us all, you know, beautiful things, uh, flowers, uh, our nutrition, uh, you know, what we need that enlightens our mood. You know, it, the trauma can bring a lot of the adverse into your life and only you can tweeze it and pick it out and say, you know what, these were my, my coping mechanisms then. You know, um, you might have picked up smoking, shopping, um, being quiet, being uh, too loud, being religious, being not religious, being um, a gambler, being too risky, being too safe, being too, uh, being too muted. You know what? What you know? What kind of happened? What? What you know? And it and it, it might be kind of scary. And, but, you know, but it's, it can be fearful to look at. So that's why you have to understand right now in the safe is saying, okay, I can see. Um, and oftentimes it's very difficult for people to make a proclamation after they've been traumatized, after they have been unheard, unseen, ignored, um, told and had something different validated. You're not a good girlfriend. You're not a good brother. You're not a good this. You're not a good, uh, you know, person, you don't have what it takes. You're not going to make it. I mean, uh, and I'm, or I'm going with someone else now. I mean, you know, all these things are your future visions, which can be literally shattered. So you don't have that vision moving forward anymore. So realize that vision is really the meta, you know, the metacognition, your ability to think about what you think about, get used to getting, getting yourself in the penthouse, look, and feel a little bit better about yourself. Even though, you know, they wanted to scratch you down, you've got these either superficial, uh, uh, you know, these coping. So, and re recognize then what are the surface emotions like anger, uh, you might become angry. Um, there came a time in my life when I said, I don't wanna be this angry. Like, I didn't wanna feel that on edge. I didn't want to live that hurried up quick, you know, unload the dishwasher, shut the silverware, do the, you know, if, if you were promulgated into that, that, you know, that sort of lifestyle, what has the trauma made you do feel and look like? I mean, could you be a guest on Jerry Springer where, uh, the people are, are crying, throwing chairs, uh, bringing out their, uh, their bank statements, bringing out their DNA tests, you know, you're the father, you, is that, is that where you want to be? You know, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to kind of go into the other lane. No, thank you. I'm going to rip my eyes away from that train wreck. Uh, train wrecks, uh, even within your life or within other people can be very, uh, 
very addictive or um, draw a lot of our attention. What happened? Are they going to make it? You know, can't, I can't believe this. My eyes, you know, and then, but meanwhile, you're giving your attention, which is your internal real estate. You know, you're basically allowing that to infiltrate and, and, and take up the time, space and value, which, which could be not in your best interest, but sp specifically speaking to the distress that is pining to be attended to go back in the old path, feel the same way, do the same things, look upon and have the same thoughts. Dr. Joe Dispenza, we have about 90,000 thoughts a day and about 85,000 of them are the same as the day before, etc. So you can see the propensity where it just wants to stay in that coping, you know, coping method, you know. So what does coping look like for you? Did you pick up smoking? Okay, does that, what, co oh, I can't, you know, you start smoking, you start drinking, you start yelling, you start self-sabotaging, you start, you know, what, what does it look like? And, and if you, if you could put that aside, know really well what that is. And then understand if I wasn't leading, you can ask yourself then if I, and get out your paper, if I wasn't leading a life that was just based on coping, I would be doing. And just dream, just open it up for one through 20. It can be something, I would be studying to be an astronaut. I would, I, I would wanna live on Mars. I would be having a garden. I'd be snorkeling. I'd be taking a trip. I'd vacation. I've set up a savings account. I'd get my own credit card. I'd go to the dentist. I'd go get a health check. I'd get a job. I'd get a part-time job. I would start uh, going out with people. I would take myself out to lunch. I would uh, have a, sp uh, a new spiritual practice. I would have a different routine. My life would feel different. My body would feel different. My body would look different. I mean, all these different things because coping keeps you in that same victim role. So in other words, you know, like an alcoholic, as long as they're still drinking, it keeps them always in that same coping mechanism until they go, man, I was drinking these liters of vodka. Like and if I, oh man, that's your body can't even handle that. I mean, I, I might as well be going out and drinking sewer water. I mean, it's about that as risky, you know, and getting yourself a, a parasite or God knows what else, you know, you, you know, so you can see you've got to get a little bit better perspective. The narcissist will will uh, dwarf you in perspective. They will make you feel um, a similar either negative way or a positive way. Pretty consistently, there's a pattern and they will keep you from changing. So in other words, then they'll fault you for all sorts of things, but they don't realize that it's part of the requirements of relating to them are that you must be an emotional punching bag. <clears throat> so, um, so it's in, in the, the main thing also that this can also cause is a dissociation from self to cope. In other words, you just start people when they're trauma in trauma, they start grasping at um, anything to stay afloat. Uh, they get desperate. Uh, they feel desperate. They feel urgent. Um, and since the feeling is so strong, they feel that it's, it must be love. This must be meaningful. This must be right. So then they sort of, um, equi equivocate or sort of, uh, get used to the negative, um, and, and just sort of be become blind to it. You become blinders to the very things that could be helpful to you. Uh, but based on oftentimes the trauma, it gives um, a sort of, you know, it, it, it creates an interpretation, which is flawed, which is, I don't have what it takes. I don't look good. I can't do this. I can't. I won't ever, you know, so you, you create this negative tide. You create this negative sort of undertow, like our, our jogger, you know, he creates, you know, he wants to go up that hill because he knows that it's making him strong. It's going to make him feel good about his legs. His legs are going to be stronger. He's going to be more mobile 
you know, um, in the next couple of days. So there's a reason why a runner will control their own tide. So you must really begin to look at um, controlling your own tide and realize those sort of rushes of emotion that slap against the wall, you know, that, um, or, you know, how do you want, you know, are you, how do you want sort of that, um, that to, to feel if you're not traumatized, de-stress, in other words, in other words, call self, you know, self-soothing, self-calming. Um, but that can be difficult because it's very new. Um, especially when the rigidity continues to arise, you're not good enough, you know, because you haven't tried enough of the new on yet. You haven't tried the serenity, uh, you know, a way of, a, like the way you approach things um, or that of feeling like I am important. And if you feel that way and you really get that soaked in, that's going to lead to a lot of different behaviors. So for example, when something tries to pull you down, you'll be able to say, no, thank you. I'm, I've got somewhere to go. So when the fear comes up, um, sorry, I've got to go Bye. I have somewhere to go. So for example, just like uh, when I was at a uh, festival this weekend, you know, sometimes there's people who are just not who you want to interact with. Hey, you know, they're wanting to pull you in and pull you into, no, no, thank you. I've got to go. I've got, I'm sorry. I've got somewhere to go. You know, me, uh, several decades ago, oh, you know, you need me to pay attention. You know better than me. You know, so before um, I would have maybe been pushed over, uh, cajoled, talked into it, um, not done what was in my best interest because I did not know better. I was still in that trauma zone. I was still employing, you know, and living by those uh, presets of fear. So in other words, that became the, no the normal, um, this sort of unhealthy nervousness. And, and, and so people don't know how to say, and I'm going to dial it down um, or I'm going to dial up my motivation for the, you know, so if my life, if I had this, you know, the self-respect, if I really didn't have all that trauma, what I would really love to do is, and you could say, you'll, and just, you know, begin to just hear your voice, just allow it to be genuine. And even if it was smacked down, uh, you know, previously you went through an emotional smackdown, uh, where you had a meltdown, uh, in front of people, who cares, who cares, uh, you know, like the Metallica zone who, it doesn't matter what they know. It doesn't matter what they say. I think that's a Metallica song, you know, but it's just, you, you have to stand in faith. Um, and you have to let, uh, something different dwell within you. I allow peace to dwell within me and it's okay. I, um, I allow calm to dwell within me and it's okay. I allow self-respect to dwell within me and it's okay. I allow being composed to dwell within me and it's okay. And I, I see, you know, what is, what has been my coping and, and I can let that go. That is okay. And then be, begin to sort of clear the way for the new you that is not hell bent on the conditioning or programming that was adverse or based on you can't, you won't, because that's begins, brings darkness, uh, which you can't really have a vision. You know, when, when we talk about like sort of growth and progress, when I've been part of things, there was always a vision. So like at a health, you know, there's a vision for how it's going to be. It's done with intention. It's done with deliberation. It's not done with, I'm going to bamboozle you with fear, trepidation, anxiety, and hurt. So that's coming from, and so you don't in the process, do not need to judge, assign a value to yourself or any other person. Just let that job go. You know, fire the judgment. Just say, you know what? I am really throwing all that out. Literally, that sort of feeling, it does not allow to dwell within here. That is reducing my internal real estate, you know, and say, I don't want my internal real estate to be, you know, to, uh, 
you know, when I, when I enter the, the feeling of my body, I want to feel strong, in control, um, self-contained, um, balanced, neutral, you know, having some new flares for how you refer to yourself and, and develop this new breezeway within yourself. That's the role of metacognition, your ability to think about what you're thinking about. A lot of people don't dwell in that space. So, and you can say, you know, and it might be, I need to stop. I need to eliminate. I need to get rid of, I need to clear the way for. So you could have a lot of junk feelings that lead to a lot of junk behaviors or decisions, junk food, junk items, junk time. You might say, you know, I'm wasting time. I'm wasting energy. I'm wasting money. I can do better. And, you know, and allow these positive I can's to have a little sprout. Catch them in their little five second I can moments. Learn to sweep those towards you. Write it down. Oh, I can what? I can feel calm, even if it's been this way for 30 years, even though I'm single, even though I'm divorced, even though, and looking forward. So truly, you know, you need to develop then a vision for self that is above and beyond. So you need to take some time to envision this because that will be the new locomotive. That will be the new steam engine. That's what will propel you forward. You need to do a little bit or a lot of upfront work for to make your life easier in that regards. You need to sit some time in that valley or in that flotation space, you know, where you spend some time at the new blueprint. Go out and get some, a huge, uh, you know, go out and get either a huge notebook that you can write it down like a poster board. Um, and I have those around here. I use those for teaching. Get some flashcards, get a notebook. Okay. These, this is not rocket scientists. This is, this is self-improvement. This is getting out of the funk that, you know, a funk feeling and not, not, you shouldn't feel this way. You should be so lucky. You might have a lot of this, a, a lot of feelings that are anchored in and keeping that negative fear in place. You might have had your egg, your, your car egged, face literally slapped, uh, yourself literally hit, uh, water thrown on you, cigarette butts. Who knows what all this, you know, involves being kicked out, be, living um, living on the street, leaving the party, leaving the family, leaving the marriage, feeling ashamed. No, you know, you do not need to allocate your, you know, you do not need to have a survivor guilt if that has been your lot, you know, in life. It's time to say, you know, I'm ripping my eyes away from that lot and I'm instead going to cast it upon what I find truly sublime, what I enjoy, what I have joy for. You might not even have a lot of enjoyment or joy or motivation. So you might need to do the recovery date and emotement, meaning I'm going to go out with a date and I'm going to with myself and I'm going to smile. I'm going to practice smiling, practice being calm, practice being serene, practice being assertive, practice being a provider, practice being a good man or whatever you feel that, uh, a good woman, loved, lovable. And it might conflict. It might be a polar opposite to the truth that you had felt that drove your life, the locomotive of your life might be fueled with a whole different fuel. It might be fueled with anger, disappointment, um, anxiety, and it might be running on that energy and that literally like diesel versus regular. And you might need to come, you know, you might need to come and you might need to have a, it's going to feel different. You're going to start drinking apple juice instead of vodka. You're going to start drinking uh, almond milk instead of uh, beer. You're going to start drinking water instead of Coke. I mean, what different things, behavior habits can you pick up? that are your day-to-day, -day, you know, that better, better, better 
soothes, calms, and solidifies the I am. That oftentimes is a polar opposite or does not mesh with the tr with your truth. So that's time your truth, which often comes, your truth can be, you know, is is developed in the first seven years of your life. And if, if it if it does not match, then you will push it away. So, you know, you're being applauded, you're a good person. If deep inside you don't feel that way because of different experiences that you've had, then you're gonna push away compliments, love, uh, you know, good feelings, good opportunities, good decisions, good days. You're gonna have this sort of ripple effect of, of sort of disowning any sort of good about you. Um, you're, you know, you're going to let those negative uh, emotions rule the roost, rule the casa, rule your life. So you can look, you can really begin to see, wow, what rules, what truths, what I am has this trauma truly done to me? You don't have to answer it all right now, but it's something important to get to know and, and just take responsibility for it. Cause you can go, okay. I'm, that means that I have to take a right instead of a hard left. I have to then do this and not that, you know, and, and so I have to eat this, not that. I have to look upon this, not that. I have to feel this, not that. And I have to develop that. And this is discipline. And you can um, then, with time, Begin to reduce it to the point where the wound, the trauma, is no longer recognizable. For a lot of people, they, they, they will push away from that very experience. Oh, but I've got to hold on to a little bit because, because, and you know, because it's this, because it's that, because, and so if, if that is your true value or your rule, then you're going to keep holding yourself down. Only you can be the new, uh, only you can be the new engineer of your locomotive, only you. And so you must get pen to paper or, or phone to phone number and start doing some things and not always checking in with the wounded child, the trauma, and just being like, okay, I'm going to allow my life to be defined of a greater percentage. And to what degree can you maximize that? And to what degree can you be free enough to allow that traumatized identity to go by the wayside, to say that is not my reality, um, you know, and that you really literally release, forgive, and forget that it's that small. It's instead of it being a big, you know, billboard, it's now... A fine grain of sand and you can come a distance and I think a lot of people are so afraid of, of falling backward just remember what forward is for you and forward might just be being being okay not making the same mistakes and that is fine you you can decide you can say I'm going to grow and expand to be this I'm gonna have my life include this or, you know, I see where a lot of my life was defined by this wound and I can let that go. You know, get a, get a dumpster, uh, throw out all, all sort of the junk or things that might have been, you know, get out, throw out, if you have uh, like a lot of drinking, throw out the bottles, the glassware, the coasters, whatever. If you're smoking, throw away all the ashtrays, the cigarette, you know, begin to get a big jar and call it, you know, your credibility jar, my I am fierce jar, and fill it up. And until maybe it gets a certain amount, then you do something special. Begin to anchor something positive in that you can go for and give yourself a chance to experience it and find a way to hold yourself accountable. Um, accountable means having an accountability within yourself. If you find, oh man, I did the same thing, then get an accountability partner here on the channel, someone that you know that goes, hey man, don't let me stay stuck in this thought process, this feel process, this be process. Let me free up a new thought process, which does actually take me somewhere, which helps me to be beside the traumatized person and go, 
you know, wow, you know, this, these are the effects. We can see this very clearly. It caused this and this to go off the rails. It caused this to happen. And don't worry about it. There is nothing you could have done in that time, you know, and then allow your, your, uh, your ideal or yourself that you want to be back on track. So how you want to feel, be, behave and, and have and become and allow those to be the new locomotive driver. I'll just allow, allow yourself to move into motion. Stop stopping yourself. Go, you know, so know clearly, you know, what your little new goal is. You know, people have a bucket list um, that they call a bucket list. This doesn't have to be a big gargantuan thing. It can be as easy as um, changing your grocery list around, changing your bedding around, changing what you wear, your shoes, um, getting rid of a whole closet of things that no longer fit you or food that you no longer eat. I mean, just go ahead and create some empty space and allow, um, you know, a more positive vision to be instilled and allow yourself to be at the helm. Even if the narcissist or your truth doesn't say, you can never be at the helm, you can never, you know, you'll know then that then sort of the, the ripple effects the uh, the earthquake sort of the rumblings of that traumatizing uh, relationships are, are still trying to put their foot down just like when you hear a foot down you know or a door slam you might be sort of remember you know and then but then you go wait I am safe I am safe and then come back to that I am strong and then develop a new vocabulary oftentimes that the narcissist do doesn't know give up the need to impress them. Hey, look how far I've come or whatever, you know, that you have sometimes these misdirected, uh, trauma or injury can allow sometimes things to get misdirected. Um, it can cause things to seem, uh, you know, um, disfigured, you know, things can be out of whack for a little bit. Life doesn't look right. Things are a mess. You can, and you will get through it. It might take a couple weeks or a couple months, but you've got this time. You've got an hour. You've got today. You've got a future. You've got some time and you will get through it and, you know, begin to define for yourself that you can let go of some type, some of these coping. The, you know, you know, you had to do this. You had to do that. You don't have to. Um, those can become presented as compulsions. You know, and so people then don't oftentimes feel very in control of compulsions or um, impulsive behaviors that keep them down in, in the ruts and aren't sort of taking them to where they want to be or feel or experience. So get to open up that a little bit. Open up a little bit of Pandora's box about the positive for you. You know, and what is one little thing that you can do today? One simple phone call, decision, account that you can open, something you can do. It doesn't have to take all day, but just as a symbol to yourself. This is what it means. This is how I know I am taking positive action in the right order so I can trust within and I can experience that and I'm not thrown off base. I, you know, and, and I'm not, my head isn't twisted. I'm not listening. I'm not thinking. I'm not worrying. I'm not living from that traumatized, you know, even though it is deep, own how deep it is and go, man, that is brutally deep and begin to speak it. Know that it is deep and then know what your surface imp um, emotions are and then know what, you know, you might be angry. And then that, you know, you might be angry about something that happened 40 years ago. Is this, do you really, you know, want, or do you want to get that under control? So let's work on processing these things. So it, it'll keep those thorns from living within you. Instead, you'll be looking on the bloom. You'll be looking on the blossom. You'll be looking on when things are going. You'll be looking at the positive. Things are okay, you know, and you, you don't have to, be according to oftentimes the precepts, the judgment, 
that the wounding party set forth because that will um, unequivocally keep you anchored to a negativity and you won't allow your full freedom to express itself and be itself, particularly as it comes with relating and valuing with the self. So you might need to speak up and say, you know what, I value me. Um, I, I value my little bit of talent. I value my little bit of free will. I value my little bit of money. I value my little bit of shelter. You know, it's good. In fact, this is perfect for me. Um, and even though you might get, you know, judgment, stop judging. Just go judgment free just for a day and see how good you'll feel as kind of a test. I hope some of these tools do help. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Have a beautiful day.